Hello and welcome to part three of a set of four videos about geometric series produced for the Yukon Q Center. In this video, I'm going to explain to you how you could tell if an infinite geometric series converges or diverges. The reasons why some geometric series converge and others diverge come from the partial sum formula. As a friendly reminder of what I was talking about in part two, the partial sum formula has two slightly different versions. If the lower limit of the geometric series you're trying to take a partial sum of is 1, then you use this version of the partial sum formula. If the lower limit of the geometric series you're trying to take a partial sum of is 0, then you use this version in order to calculate the sum. As for the n value, the n value that you substitute into either version of the formula is whatever the upper limit of your series is. So in this example, I'm going to substitute 10 for n, whereas in this example, I'm going to substitute 9 in for n. So far, we have been using this formula to calculate the nth partial sum of geometric series. If we were to take the limit as n goes to infinity of this formula, this would give us the sum of an infinite number of terms. If the limit is a finite number, that means the sum of the series is a finite number, and that, by definition, means that the series converges. In contrast, if the limit happens to be positive infinity, or negative infinity, or something undefined, that means that the sum of a particular series is negative infinity, or positive infinity, or something undefined, which is the very definition of diverging. What's going to happen to this limit all depends on what the r value happens to be, and I can narrow down what the value of r could be to three possibilities. I'm going to look at each of these possibilities case by case and show you what happens to the limit. To illustrate what happens if the absolute value of r is greater than 1, let's suppose that r is equal to 10. I substitute that into the limit, I simplify it, and then what I do to make what's going to happen to the limit very easy to see is, I rewrote this so that I now have a positive denominator by factoring out negative 1 from what's in the parentheses and canceling out the common negative 1 between the numerator and denominator. Now, we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity. 10 raised to n as n goes to infinity is infinity. What happens then is that this limit is either positive infinity or negative infinity. If a is positive, then the limit's positive infinity. If a is negative, then the limit is negative infinity. Whatever a happens to be, we can now safely conclude that if the absolute value of r is anything greater than 1, whether it's 2 or 3 or anything else, then the series is going to diverge. Case number 2 can be broken down into two mini cases. If the absolute value of r equals 1, then r is either 1 or negative 1. Let's first consider the possibility that r is equal to 1. If that's the case, then substituting r into the limit is obviously going to make the denominator 0. Dividing by 0 is undefined. So what I conclude then is that if the value of r equals 1, then the geometric series diverges. Now let's consider the possibility that r is equal to negative 1. If this is true, then we could represent any geometric series with an r value of negative 1 like this. If I was to look at the first six terms of such a series, Notice what happens. If negative 1 is raised to an even exponent, it simplifies to positive 1. But if negative 1 is raised to an odd exponent, it simplifies to negative 1. This basically means we're having a minus a plus a minus a, and the cycle repeats forever. If we were to look at it this way, the sum of the first term is a, the sum of the first two terms is 0, the sum of the first three terms is a, the sum of the first four terms is zero, and this cycle repeats on and on. Because of the fact that the sum is oscillating between zero and a, that means that there is no defined limit as n goes to infinity. The limit cannot be both values at the same time. So I conclude that if your r value equals negative one, then the series diverges. Finally, Let's illustrate what happens in case 3 when the absolute value of r is between 0 and 1 by setting r equal to 1 half. If I substitute this value into the limit, I get this. 
which then simplifies to this expression. Now, just like any other number between 0 and 1, if I was to take the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 half raised to n, notice that as the n value increases, the 1 half raised to n gets closer and closer to 0. Because of that, this limit here becomes 2a, which is a finite number. And because the limit is a finite number, I could conclude that if the absolute value of r is somewhere between 0 and 1, then the series converges. As an extension of what I was saying on the previous slide, if the absolute value of r is something between 0 and 1, then this r raised to n part goes to 0. And what that means is this simple formula here can be used to calculate the infinite sum of any convergent geometric series. To give you an example of using this formula, if we look at this infinite series here, we know that it converges because the absolute value of its r value, 1 over 4, is somewhere between 0 and 1. The a value is 7, the r value is 1 fourth. I substitute those values into the simple formula, and what I get is that the infinite sum of this particular geometric series is 28 divided by 3. To briefly summarize this video, an infinite geometric series converges if and only if the absolute value of its r value is somewhere between 0 and 1. The infinite sum of any infinite geometric series could be calculated using this simple formula, a divided by quantity 1 minus r. Finally, if the absolute value of your r value is equal to or greater than 1, then the series diverges. Thank you for watching this video.